is the true value. I don't know the true value, yeah? So it's a very peculiar definition at the first glance. This definition is taken, is the same like for, from measurement area. Classic measurements in electronic engineering. The same definition for sensor. What is the true value? Let's discuss the temperature. I develop, I develop the novel temperature sensor and I'm interested how accurately I can measure temperature using this sensor. So what I'm doing? Fortunately, in every country there is a, some sort of national bureau of standards. Yeah? And they have standards. In Mexico there is also national, some sort of bureau of standards. That's right? Mm -hmm. It must be. So, in this case, they have very accurate standards of time. Very accurate standards of time. I am sending my newly developed sensor to this bureau and they are comparing the output signal from the standard and from my sensor. This is the way to know the true value. True value. But, very important question from sensor point of view. For several sense, sensed quantities, there is no standards. It's easy for temperature, length, and others, classic quantities. But for several, for instance, I developed, I developed new type of gas sensor. There is no standard of gas with certain concentration. There is no such standard. So what can I do? What can I do to assess the quality of my newly developed sensor? What can I do? Everybody is thinking. I develop new sensor. I have to assess how good is this sensor, how accurate is this sensor. What can I do as an engineer? Because if you are working in industry, I'm always telling my students, you cannot tell your boss if he will give us, if he, if he will give you certain task, you cannot tell him, I don't know. Yeah? Because if you tell him once, twice, three times, he will suck you. Simple. You have to find out the solution. So what can I do? to assess how good is my newly developed sensor. I have no standard. Again, this is the, this is the sensor thinking. Yeah? I have to find out the solution. What can I do? Krishna. Compare with other sensors. Loudly. Compare with other commercial sensors. Excellent. Excellent. Compare. I am looking at the market. I am looking at the market and selecting the best commercially available sensor, yeah? And comparing my newly developed sensor to the best commercially available sensor. But this technique has a one disadvantage. Tell me which one it is. <laughs> what can I conclude from this comparison? What can I conclude? What is the limit of this approach? Only compared to that. Of course, of course, but what is the limit? Let's assume, let's assume theoretically that my newly developed sensor is better than the best commercially available sensor. Can I conclude this from this comparison studies? No, no. I can only conclude in the best scenario that my newly developed sensor 
is as good as good as the best commercially available sensor. But I cannot say it's better. I don't know. There will be only the guess without any proof. This is the disadvantage. So here is a standard, you have the standard <coughs> standard algebra for the accuracy. Uh, and uh, you can calculate this accuracy. And uh, this is what I what I what I told you. There is a detailed description of the thinking regarding accuracy. Precision, precision. Most of the people believe that accuracy is the same as precision. It is not. It is not. In sensor technology, it is not. It's completely different parameter. Precision has nothing to do with accuracy, and vice versa. Precision describes how exactly and reproducibly an unknown value is measured. So it has nothing to do with how accurately the measured value represents the unknown parameter. And this is example. When I'm using a ruler, ruler to measure the length of this chair back, I have to place my ruler precisely in parallel to, to this back. If I will make mistake, it's not placed properly, I will get wrong result. So this is this what the precision is about. So the precision refers to how carefully the number is read from the ruler and how carefully the ruler is set next to the rod, for instance, if I'm measuring the length on the rod. But look, look, this is very important point. Accuracy without precision does not have any meaning. And precision does not imply accuracy. So we have to distinguish these two parameters. They are completely different. Completely different. Resolution. Resolution. Very important parameter. Resolution. The smallest increment in the value of the measurement that results in a detectable in increment in the output. So what does it mean? Let's take, let's take gas sensor as an example. Yeah? This is my gas sensor. I'm going to measure carbon monoxide concentration. I'm getting, for instance, a resistance change. So Calibration curve, transfer characteristic, will be resistance versus gas concentration. Let's assume that this is nice linear characteristic. Nice linear characteristic. Again, the smallest increment in the value of the measurement that results in a detectable increment in the output. So, let's assume that my sensor operates in the range in the range, for instance, 10 ppm or 1 ppm to 1000 ppm. When I will change the concentration of gas of the input, by 1 ppm, I can still observe the change in the resistance. But when I will change the concentration of gas by 1 ppb, 1 part per billion, it is likely that I do not observe any change in the output signal. This is what about, this is about the resolution. Resolution. The smallest increment into the in the in the uh, measure again some basic algebra basic algebra so I can I can 
calculate this properly. And I can also calculate the average resolution. Average resolution. This is a basic algebra. You can study this at home. The next very important parameter, sensitivity. Sensitivity, if you look at this characteristic, this is a slope of calibration curve. Yeah? Slope of the calibration curve. We can define sensitivity in two different ways. <coughs> we can put it like a, in this case, we can put this as a either delta i or delta c. So the unit will be ohms per concentration, let's say, concentration of carbon monoxide. Or we can also define this as a delta R to initial value of the uh, our sensor, re the initial resistance value, to delta C. So in this case, in this case, in this case, the unit will be concentration to minus one. Yeah? There will be no resistance here. Mm -hmm. Concentration to minus one. Both ways are correct. Selectivity is also called specificity. Selectivity and specificity values are parameters are practically only used in chemical sensing field and bio sensing field because they are not used in mechanical domain or thermal domain or magnetic domain chemical chemical domain why because we are dealing with the mixture of gases multi component mixture of gases or we are dealing with multi component mixture of ions in liquid media. We have many type of gases in a mixture present or many type of ions present in a liquid. So we want our sensor to respond only to one target analyte. One. In the case of carbon monoxide, sensor should respond only to carbon monoxide. But unfortunately it's not the case because part of the output signal will be due to the change of concentration of other gases which are present in a mixture. So selectivity is not perfect. And I mentioned on Friday there's a big problem in chemical sensing domain and biosensing domain. Selectivity. Our body, our body, mother nature is perfect because mother nature offers perfect selectivity. Why? Inside our body, antigen-antibody interaction is perfectly selective. Only particular antigen can interact with particular antibody. Only particular stimulant could interact with a particular receptor. So in our body, we have a lock and key, lock and key mechanism. I can open this door only if I have the right key. That's it. Selectivity is perfect. But for human developed sensor, selectivity is far away from perfect. And we have to think always about selectivity, specificity. Also, 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 here we have in non-ideal sensor the output might change due to the change of environmental factors already, already listed before. We don't want our sensor to respond to environmental factors. We have to suppress the influence of humidity on the output signal. Again, we can use some algebra and we can calculate the partial sensitivity 
run in summer term. This is a sorry, this is a mistake. Here should be selectivity. Uh, sorry. Or yeah, the, okay, sorry, this is correct. So we can calculate this. We can calculate this very easily. And we can measure quantitative measure of selectivity and sensitivity. Now the next parameter, very important parameter, is a minimum detectable signal. It's related to the noise. To the noise. All electronic engineers know very well that any type of electrical device is noisy. Yeah? If you will if you will attach, if you will connect your resistor, capacitor, inductor, or sensor, or sensor to the scope, what you can observe on the screen? It will be flat line. Krishna. Flat line. Connecting resistor to the scope or sensor to the scope, your, your carbon monoxide sensor to the scope. Here is a screen, screen, yeah, scope screen, do I see the flat line or not? Um, easy question, Krishna. Now, what you observe, what you <coughs> observe? Huh? We have to give him hard time, yeah? <laughs> PhD students should work very hard, much harder than we are working, yeah? Because this is a future of the society. That's right? Krishna, what will you observe? Tomorrow I will know other students. <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat the question? Okay. <coughs> any type of any type of electrical component. Because we can use it com we can call it component or element. Yeah? For instance, we are taking ordinary resistor. Resistor. Or we are taking ordinary capacitor. Or we are taking ordinary inductor or we are taking any type of sensor, any type of sensor without, without any input signal. So, let's be more specific. Your carbon monoxide sensor, carbon monoxide sensor, you place this sensor in a gas chamber filled with a dry air or dry nitrogen. There is no carbon monoxide at all. There is no input signal, that's right? Mm -hmm. And connecting this sensor to the scope input terminals. Mm -hmm. My question is, what do you observe? Flat line or not? Mm -hmm. If not, this is a simple question. Mm -hmm. Noise signal. Pardon? Some noise signal. Yes, it will be noisy signal. Noisy signal, yeah, mm -hmm. because Everything in nature is noisy. Noisy. That's right. I don't want to be a, with your permission, counting on your sense of humor. I don't want to be macho man. <laughs> According to the Spanish culture, but counting again on your sense of humor, women are more noisy than men. <laughs> That's right. Which is good, which is good because they are living longer, they are exchanging air in lungs, which is good, which I like. So we observe, we observe noisy signal, yeah? We observe this sort of grass, I call it in the colloquial language, grass, grass. This is a noise, noise. Do you have some... Basic knowledge regarding noise. 
There are many types of knives, yeah? Many types of knives. Gaussian. Pardon? Gaussian. Gaussian. Correct, correct. We have, some of them are Gaussian, some of them are not, because thermal noise, thermal noise, when the charge carriers are striking each other, moving in a Brownian yeah. mode, Brownian movements, yeah. it is causing noise. Noise. We have one over F noise, we have Schottky noise, we have other Johnson noise, different spectra depending on the frequency. That's right? Depending on the frequency. And this noise, this noise in our sensor, every sensor has a certain noise level. This noise is causing certain problems. But again, again, sensor thinking, sensor thinking. Dr. Alejandro says, maybe we can make a profit on noise. That's right. From one side, is not the desirable phenomenon. But other side, maybe is a source of information, yeah? Maybe let's use noise as a source of information, and later I will tell you how to do this, yeah? So let's come back to the point. Minimum detectable signal, minimum detectable signal. Assuming that the signal of the measure does not contain any noise, the minimum signal level that yields a readable transducer output is determined by the noise performance of the transducer. So this definition, this definition is a very tricky one because you have to, you have to understand the history of noise, the history of noise. Usually, traditionally, when the electronic engineer is dealing with noise, what he is doing? His way of thinking is, I should have the high signal to noise ratio, yeah? Mm -hmm. An electronic engineer is looking around for the capacitor to suppress the noise ratio, the noise level. Mm -hmm. Because for him, noise is a disaster. That's right? Mm -hmm. To in increase the signal to noise ratio. <coughs> this is way of thinking. But at the same time, as I said, we can use noise. We can use noise in a profitable way. Profitable way. So, uh, in this case, in this case, we can all internal sources of the noise for the transducer can be bunched together to form a single noise source. And this is called equivalent input noise source. When it is connected to the noiseless, noiseless sensor, noiseless sensor, it, yield, it yields the output noise level of the transducer and the star. And the minimum signal level that yields the reliable transducer output signal, the, this MDS, is usually taken as a root mean square RMS equivalent input noise. So signal to noise ratio of zero decibels, or zero decibels, zero decibels. Minimum detectable signal. So when we look at this, at this calibration card, transfer characteristic, the question is, the question is, the, the reason why I said that this definition is a little bit tricky, because I explain. What does it mean? I have carbon monoxide sensor, yeah? And uh, I place the sensor in the gas chamber, gas chamber. Of course, this sensor is noisy, noisy. It shows this output, output signal. So, first I am putting one PPB of the carbon monoxide into my gas chamber. And I am looking, I am looking what's going on. K 
Can I read something, some resistance change or not? Yeah? And if not, I'm taking 10 PBB and so on, so on. But, but, the trick is that traditionally in telecommunication field, we could not measure, many years ago, we were not able to measure the signal below the noise level, yeah? But now the progress in telecommunication is huge. And all these telecommunication people who are dealing with the space, when they are examining signals coming from the cosmos, from other planets, from you know, different phenomena occurring in the cosmos, they are dealing with a very weak signal very weak signals and many times these signals are lower than the noise level so they develop they develop techniques which are able to measure signal below the noise level these techniques are usually sophisticated and rather expensive but it's possible to do this it's possible so if necessary if necessary we can adopt these techniques to sensor technology, if necessary. If necessary. Yeah? Now, again, these two phenomena, these two parameters, if we look minimum detectable signal and threshold. Threshold, starting from the measurement of value zero, the smallest initial increment in the measurement in results in a detectable output is a threshold. Again, it's the similar situation like sensitivity, like a accuracy and precision. At the first glance, at the first glance, if we look, if we look, we can say they are very similar. They are not. Accuracy has nothing to do with precision, and MDS has nothing to do with a threshold. They are different parameters. They could, could not be mixed. They could not, could not be mixed because this, this definition is for the real sensor with a, a real noise level. Here we define this. Here we define this for noiseless, for noiseless sensor. For noiseless sensor, putting this equivalent input noise source at the input. And threshold is usually due to the device, to the sense of non-linearity. Non-linearity. <coughs> non-linearity. Let's discuss the non-linearity. My question is, if we are developing or dealing with uh, any type of sensor, is a transfer characteristic is Nicely linear, good news or bad news? Krishna, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks God that you have a sense of humor. Yeah, I'm not harassing you, but as I, as I, as I said, I don't know anybody's name. So. Look, you understand, I cannot harass doctors. That's right? It will be not wise. <laughs> because I will not survive here. <laughs> so I have to target you. <laughs> Linearity is good? It's good, of course, it's good. But my question is, if the sensor has non-linear output-input relationship, is it drama or not? Is it a big drama? No, it is not. It is not at all. Because, for instance, for instance, Thermistors, thermistors are highly, highly non-linear. These thermistors made from different mixtures of materials. They offer very high sensitivity to temperature, but characteristic is highly non-linear. So what we are doing? What we are doing? We are using no electronic means, electronic means to linearize the characteristic, and even in a thermistor case, they are linearizers, 
commercially available. So it's not a big drama. It's not a big. We can always linearize transfer characteristics. And here we have a measure of deviation from linearity. This is the description, algebra. Again, nothing, nothing special. We have different uh, way. We have different way to uh, calculate linearity of the transfer characteristics. Distortion. As you can see, many sensor parameters, many sensor parameters, all of them should be analyzed. Distortion. Deviation from the expected output. In some cases, distortion is a measure of deviation from linearity. However, is not needed to be related to non-linearity non at all. And there is an example, sinusoidal oscillator. Sinusoidal, sinusoidal oscillator is also a sensor. Electrical input, electrical output. We are generating sinusoidal wave. And it's, it's, it will be nice if this sinusoidal wave is perfectly sinusoidal. But in most cases, in the real world, it is not. So, in this case, because oscillator is nonlinear, we can, this is the measure, distortion is a measure of deviation of the output of perfectly, of perfect sinusoidal, sinusoidal wave. So this is very subtle, very subtle, uh, very subtle uh, parameter. In the case of gas sensors, is not important. Yeah, is not important. No need to calculate the stuff. Conformity on conformance. Closeness of an experimental curve to a theoretical curve. When we are modeling our sensor, calculating transfer characteristic theoretically, theoretically, a later on conducting experiment, we have to measure how good our modeling job was done. So this is about conformity. Hysteresis. Hysteresis. Very important parameter. Very important parameter. Let's discuss hysteresis. The same characteristic for carbon monoxide sensor. Resistance versus carbon monoxide concentration. So, I'm calibrating my sensor for different, for different carbon monoxide concentrations. I'm getting some calibration points yeah, in a certain range, increasing carbon monoxide concentration. And now I'm doing the same job going decreasing carbon monoxide concentration, going back. Of course, in an ideal case, I should get the same point. But it could not be the case, because I can get, I can get different values. Different values here. Let's put it in red. Different values. This is hysteresis. Yeah? This is hysteresis. This is hysteresis. And let me make a point. Let's come back to our yesterday discussion. Yeah? You are not able to assess hysteresis. You are not able to assess several other sensor parameters when we are using silver contact electrons. Yeah? 
you are not able to do this because your results will be unreliable. Hysteresis is mostly important in magnetic sense. Magnetic, this is a big nuisance in magnetic, but it also occurs in other type of sensors. Hysteresis is not welcome mm -hmm. at all. Hysteresis is also very important in mechanical, in sensors for mechanical quantities, especially with sensors with movable, movable parts. Why? Because friction occurs and it causing hysteresis. Repetability. Repetability. Very important parameter. The difference in the output readings at the given value of measure. I come I come to to my laboratory on Monday morning. I measure resistance value for, let's say, 10 ppm of carbon monoxide, yeah? I did the same measurement on Tuesday. I should get the same results. I'm not getting the same results. Why not? Why not, Krishna? Tell me, help me. Tell me, simple question. Simple question. Why not? What is the major culprit? Temperature. No, tem listen. Wrong. Why? Because you have to conduct this measurement precisely at the same temperature. If you are not keeping temperature constant, you are wasting your time. Pardon me. Yeah? All the same conditions, experiment at the same conditions, the same temperature, the same humidity, the same electromagnetic interference and so on, the same, but the result is different, why not? Why not? Simple question, why not? Everybody thinks. What is the major culprit? Time, the, well, no, I the, the speed. The Say it again loudly, please. Sorry? Loudly, loudly. 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 Okay. Uh, I think that the, the speed that the component or element get in the, in the same state is slow in order to get the, the state. The time of interaction. What time of interaction? You are, you, are, you are doing the same. On Tuesday, you are doing the same job like on Monday. The same experimental condition, mm -hmm. the same concentration of carbon monoxide, mm -hmm. and you are getting slightly different value of resistance. Why? What could be a major problem? Surface conditions have Measurement is The surface conditions have uh, changed. Why? Because there is a chemical process in there. Why? Electronic and chemical. Tell me. The major culprit is different <coughs> because my question is. Look, Krishna, tell me, are you the same today like, like one week ago? The same or not? Are you the same? Are you sure that you are the same? Aging. Aging. Aging, yeah. I am different than 10 years ago. That's right. I am different. This is mother nature rule. The same story with sensor. Aging. Aging. For instance, to make the uh, the, the issue more understable, when I am dealing with mechanical type of sensor, let me let me make one remark. Mechanical type of sensor, for instance, pressure sensor. University people are developing pressure sensor in the laboratory. It works perfectly well. 
Yeah, they are very happy publishing paper, and they believe the job is done. That's only the beginning of the long way. Why? Why? Because the major problem is packaging. Packaging. If you are going to commercialize the sensor, packaging. So you have to do packaging job. Let me tell you something. The only three to five people in Silicon Valley who are able to do properly packaging job. It's not a trivial job. It's extremely difficult. Why? Because stress distribution. Stress distribution. Stress distribution, due to the different properties of materials used, there are many materials used. For my sensor, many materials, yeah? Different temperature expansion coefficients. Stress distribution is unpredictable. It, I cannot predict, I cannot model the stress distribution. I can model now, today, but I cannot predict what will be tomorrow. I cannot envisage that it will be such and such. I can calculate again. So the materials are aging, everything is changing. We are changing, materials are changing, everything is changing. So this is the reason for the, for the eventual poor repatibility. So what we, what we can do, what we can do in order to improve, we have to go deeply into physical chemistry, in material science, to have a good understanding of materials. This is the big job, big job. This job is for really interdisciplinary team. It shows you the degree of difficulty when you are going to commercialize your sensor. Very important parameter, repeatability. I want the same results. In a commercially available sensor, when I'm using this sensor, I need the same results today and in a two years time. The same. Not different, because different sensor is useless. That's right? So we can, okay, so we can, we can follow this, we can move forward tomorrow. And uh, now you will kindly make a copy. We'll distribute, yeah, it will be useful. Do you have your memory stick? Great, great. So let's now make a copy. Again, thank you very much for your attendance. I'm more happy today than yesterday because we have a sunny day. <laughs> yeah. my, my mood is better. Everything is better than yesterday, that's right? Everything is better. We will continue and, and finally we will jump into nanosensor field, yeah? After this introduction, introductory lectures because I decided to address several people present in the audience who have a very little knowledge and experience in sensor field. So they can have a flavor of this field and finally, they will have a flavor of nanosensors. Yeah, because it's a huge, huge subject. Huge subject. Okay? See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.